Hey YouTube, this is Tom at TM Aquatics and in today's video, I'm gonna demonstrate how I remove fry from this shell dweller tank and get them safely into a breeder box. Now I only keep ocelotus, but this video and these techniques could apply pretty much to any shell dweller. So stick around and check this out. All right, YouTube, one of the most common questions I get is how do I remove all of these Ocelata shell dweller fry out of this tank, especially since I keep real shells in there. Anybody that's kept shell dwellers knows that when you have real shells in the tank, it makes it extremely challenging when it comes time to remove the fry from the tank. Now there's two different methods that I use, and I know I've spoken about both of them in past videos, but today I thought I would make a video and dedicate the entire video to how I remove these shell dwellers. Now regardless of which method you use, and I'll explain which each one of them are in just a second here, but regardless of which method you use, it's very important to get to know your fish. Each one of your females has their own unique personality no different than you and I. And when you know that fish and you see the difference in their behavior, it's not going to take long before you're going to know when that female has spawned, when she has eggs in her shell, and when she has wigglers in that shell. And once you learn what those differences are, your success is going to increase significantly. Okay, so at this point you're probably thinking, enough talking already, just go ahead and demonstrate how you get the fry out of these shells, out of the tank, and into a fry box. Well, the first method is pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. You simply remove the shell. Remove the shell that has the spawn in it. But it's not as easy as that might sound. There's a couple of tricks and a couple of tips that I want to share. First of all, you need to know when that female spawned so you know when those eggs have hatched, when they've become wigglers, and from there you're going to know when they're going to be free swimming. When the fry first become free swimming, they will start to peek out of that shell. They won't leave the shell but they'll peek out of the shell. That is the time to remove it for the maximum yield from that spawn. But it's not as simple as it sounds. If you reach in to try and pick up that shell, mom is going to swim into that shell and she is going to body block you from being able to extract the fry. Mom's inside the shell protecting and blocking off the fry. Game over. So you have to remove the shell without mom being in the shell. Well, what do I do? There's a couple ways that I separate mom from the, the shell. You can either feed the tank and if mom darts away from the shell, you can quickly stick a net down, block her from returning to the shell, lift it out and do your thing. The other way, sometimes mom will attack whatever you're lowering into the tank. So if you slowly lower a net, I have a couple females that this works out on, not the other ones, but slowly lower net downs toward, towards that shell and they're going to attack the net. From there, it's real easy to block them from the shell, reach in, grab it, and pull it out. Now once you get the shell out, gently pour out the sand. Fill that shell back up, give it a light shake, and start emptying the water. And do that 20-30 times until you're comfortable and you're certain that you have all the fry out of that shell. Now I will say those shell or those uh, fry can really wedge themselves in the very ends of those shells real good. So those last few shakes and pours, you might need to do it a little more vigorously. Now even though I do have some small babies in the tank, for today's video I'm not going to demonstrate this method live, but here's a demo to give you a good idea of what I'm talking about. Now I'm going to go ahead and answer a question that I'm sure is going to come up and that is, Tom, why don't you just take the entire shell full of fry and just simply place that in a grow out tank? Well I used to do that, but that shell becomes a defined territory that eventually all the fry are going to want and that defined territory led to aggression. So as long as I'm removing the shell. I'm just going to take the extra one or two minutes it takes to remove the fry from the shell and that way I don't need to worry about aggression issues later on. Now the other method that I use is siphoning. 
I siphon the babies out of the tank. And it's the method that I've been using for the past three to four months. And it's going to be the method that I'm going to attempt to demonstrate tonight. Now, this one can be a little tricky. It can be a little more consuming, but it's just the method that I've been using. I'm not worried about maximizing the yield anymore because honestly, I've got more Ocelotus Fry than I can sell. So, but the, how this method works, number one, pretty straightforward. And in this case, regular aquarium airline tubing is your best friend. Now in this shell right there that the female's watching and guarding, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a new fry in there. She has another generation of fry. And they're just to the point now where they're starting to peek out of that shell. And in another day or two, they're gonna start venturing out of the shell. They're only gonna go anywhere from maybe one to four inches away at first. And that's when you can start siphoning them out with airline tubing catch them out in the open like this here but you got to move slowly but when you catch them out in the open like this simply lower some airline tubing into the water lower it slowly until you drop it right on top of that fry and out they come now these fry here they're too big for this airline tubing I don't want to hurt them these guys here are a little larger than any other fry that I've siphoned. Uh, I've been out of fry tanks for a while, so I really had nowhere to move them until recently. But we're gonna try and remove them tonight. But because they're a little bit larger, we need to bring in a little larger tubing. So in this case, I have you know, about a six foot piece of quarter inch inside diameter tubing. And this is much larger than those little babies. So. I'll be lowering this down on top of these larger babies and sucking them right on out of there. Kind of get a twofer though, because when you do it, you actually remove a bunch of water and kind of do a small water change in the process too. <laughs> Score! But anyways, uh, because they're this size, um, they're a little bigger, a little faster, a little smarter, a little more wise. It's going to be a little more challenging to remove all these fry. I mean, they're scattered all over in this tank. But when they are like this as well and you try to siphon them out, it's going to take a little bit of work. It might take a couple of days or a few days to get them all. But one of the benefits when they get this large is they do venture a little bit further away from mom. Now if a fry, let's say I went down for this fry here and this fry jumped into that shell, I could remove that shell. Mom ain't going to give two flips about it. So I can remove these shells one at a time and pour the babies out if I can't get them with the air tube. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and try to demonstrate using this method here. Hopefully we get a few out. I don't expect to get them all, but if I can get maybe a third of them out tonight and get them in a fry box, I'm gonna call it a success. So here we go. All right, I believe there's one or two down in this shell right here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that shell out and we're just gonna physically remove those fry from that shell right there. You know, there's clearly the one in there, but I think there actually might be two. Well, I would consider it a huge success. I ended up getting all of the larger fry out of the tank. I believe we ended up with 23 total, and they've now been safely added to a Zis 
fry box. They're a little stressed out right now, but they'll recover shortly and then I'll go ahead and feed them. Now if you're newer to my channel, I just want to say thank you for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. If you have any comments or questions, go ahead and post them down below. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share a couple options to watch some more of my videos. Do me a favor, click on one of those, watch another one. But as always folks, I greatly appreciate you stopping by. And until the next one, thanks again, and we'll catch you all later.